So in this uh, FAQ series video, I want to talk to you today about relationships and um, understanding and applying relationships in in vivo. Kind of underutilized quite a bit. A lot of people don't understand them. And I just realized that the video, because we, we got a question during the week and the video we have up there about them is 10 years old. So it's time to make a new one. So just gonna, I can't delve too deep, deep into this because it would be a, too long a video. Generally, these things are not liked if they're too long. So I'm gonna keep it as brief as I can. Really, we're gonna explain the concept and just show you a practical demonstration of it being applied in the software. So usually relationships would be thought about at the point where you are coming to the end of your analysis, you're at the higher level of analysis, you've developed your themes, and you now want to explore relationships across and between them. Now there's two types of relationships in any data set. There's physical relationships, which are data led. So they're like patterns in the data. I can show, here's a bunch of themes, which ones are the dominant ones, uh, which ones were more experienced proportionately by women in the study, proportionate to the study population, uh, or different groups, voice representation within themes. And I can use matrix visualizations and um, cross-tab queries, etc., various other queries to explore those relationships and sometimes to find out about them, sometimes to report on them. I want to produce a matrix that shows the weighting of these codes between positivity and negativity, for example. So they're easily dealt with in, you know, without having necessarily relationships in in vivo, relationship codes. But then the other type of relationship is a conceptual one, and that's more to do with um, you, for, you know, the researcher led as opposed to data led. And it's you trying to make sense of those themes and connect the dots, you know, like what's, what's connected to what. Now, the tool is a relationship and a relationship code, you see it under coding because it's a code, it's a type of code, but it bridges two other codes. So I wanted, to, I've, I'm looking at my top level codes here and I think that community change is a catalyst for environmental change. Um, and I want to see what kind of trajectory what relationships community change has with other themes that leads it ultimately to community change, environmental change. So I start out with community change and I define the type of relationship. I think community change will inevitably lead to real estate development because as, as communities expand, then new homes get built and that means development. And that will be one leg of the relationship. So I need to form, first of all, a relationship type. So I can have as many of these as I want. And I might decide that, you know, impacts on leads to their types of relationships. Uh, I can make a as many of these as I want. I'm going to make a new relationship type. And I'll say informs is a type of relationship when something is just informing something else. And I decide then is that an associative, symmetrical or one way? So I think it's uh, it's symmetrical. They influence each other. So community development or community expansion influences, uh, you know, development of real estate. But real estate may get developed to bring people in. So it's it's a symmetrical relationship. And then I'm saying okay to that. So I have it now in my list of relationship types. And then I want to form a relationship. That'll be in this folder here. And you can see we have these. These are often used as well for social network analysis, um, egocentric network analysis. But we're not doing that today. We're just looking, you know, at connecting the dots with our themes. So there is other videos and tutorials on that. It's a separate, that's a whole other video. Um, so I'm making a new relationship here. And I think that from, let's say, community that, that community change is associated with real estate development now what I've just formed is a relationship I already have a so I'll cancel that but it's it's here already so what, what I've what, what I've created now is 
a relationship between two items in my database. There it is. So this is a proper code. I can open up the from item, which is community change, or the to item, which is real estate development, and seek evidence of that relationship and actually code for it. So if I open up the from item, you'll see that you can actually code text or media, like any other code that supports the relationship. Um, so I can look at the waiting and see sense. So I'm reading through this and this is somebody talking about community change and already they're talking about developing new properties in the area. So I might decide that that represents a, an evidence of the relationship and I code it to the relationship. And I can open up a relationship code like any other code and it will contain all of the evidence that I have gathered from both of the other two codes that support the connectedness of those two items. And I'd say I've made a web of relationships. I've followed that process and I've decided that there's a trajectory here that because real estate development then affects water quality, which is here under our um, natural environment. And I think water quality impacts on the natural environment and the natural environment impacts on environmental changes. So maybe habitat or landscape. So I can see how I can build a chain of relationships. In other words, X causes Y, Y causes Z. Therefore, X informs Z or causes Z. So let's say I've built up those, those relationships now and I want to map them. That takes me down here to a tool called the mapper. There are three types of maps. Um, there is concept map, project map, and mind maps. The one I'm interested in today is a project map because we're mapping part of the project. And I make a new, I make a, a new project map. I've just made one here. I just give it a name and it's called testing relationships. I literally do that. I make a new project map. I give it a title and I just started it here. There's nothing in it yet. So I have my blank relationship. Now, um, what I need to do is I need to start to drop my codes in here that inform that relationship. So I'm deciding that community change impacts on informs leads to real estate development. And if I right click on community change and I say, show me the associated items, the actual data behind that code is here. I can see all the interviews that are populated in here. These are all the people who have talked about community change. But, but down here, I can see relationships and it's already in three relationships. And I can decide to bring those in. Um, let's say community change is associated with real estate development. So I, it's now connected up those two codes and it's telling me that this is an associative relationship and I can open up the codes by double clicking on them and I can open up the relationship by double clicking on it and I'll see the data is actually behind it. So every time I add a code and it's an ensuing relationship, it will connect it up and tell me what that relationship is. So you can imagine if I have a string of these, I can say that community change, uh, you know, is associated with real estate development, which in turn impacts on water quality, which in turn affects the natural environment, which in turn leads to environmental change. Therefore, community change leads to environmental change. And this is the trajectory that it's on. It's, it doesn't in and of itself cause environmental change, but it causes the chain of events to happen that leads to environmental change. And I can model this, I can put this out into my map, put in my PowerPoint for my presentation. And of course, it's still linked to the data. Now, there's just one caveat to that. I could do this with doubt relationships as well. If I go down here to the maps, 
um, and I want to just look at the concepts, but I'm not going to necessarily start coding into relationships, then I can do a concept map. And that would allow me to drop items into the map without the relationship. So I literally put the codes in and it allows me to, if I edit this, you'll see that I can, I can draw connectors across and between these items, community change, informs real estate development. And if I type into it, you can see I can, I can you know, which in turn leads to, so I'm not actually using formal relationships and I don't, I'm not coding for them, but I'm, I'm still modeling from my actual codes those relationships which are researcher led. So I'd end up with um, something like relationships uh, concepts. So I can show the trajectory, I can show the relationship and therefore that when you follow this logic that eventually we're connecting these two, although not directly, that we're still saying that they're community change still will lead you to environmental change and that that's the trajectory uh, and there you, you, they're literally drag and drop and then just add your connectors you know if I if I drag a code in I'll just go back to my codes for one sec um, if I drag my code in I really need to edit that if I drag my code in I can just connect up myself what I think if I click in to this guy here you'll see the pointer and um, I, I can add a connector and I, I can decide um, I'm just going to put my spotlight on there I can decide um, what that connector what that relationship is and I can name it and define it I can type into it and then they behave like if I do if I actually use relationships they behave like codes they're searchable like they can be retrieved and reported on or I can just do a higher level conceptual map like this without the physical relationships so I try to keep it as brief as I can and um, so that's just a, a quick view we'll put up an email address there if there's any questions that arise out of this that you we, we don't cover in the video then feel free to send an email if you think the video was helpful please um, like and subscribe and don't forget to hit the uh, notification bell and we'll see you up the way in the near future at some other FAQ hopefully thank you for watching